To start, both my parents and I have grown up in a small southeastern town in Kentucky. The landscape is quite rural, and the actual city see only has one stoplight in it, even in 2019. For the most part, the area is peaceful, and it feels as if everyone knows each other. While this story doesn't involve the paranormal, it is extremely terrifying. A real-life nightmare, if you will. The story begins on September 18th in the county's only high school. Both of my parents were teachers at this said school. My mother happened to be in her planning period and was sitting in her teacher's lounge with a few other personnel. Their planning was cut short when a fellow female teacher ran screaming immediately into the teacher's round, stating, he's got a gun, he's got a gun. Understandably, the teacher was too distressed to explain in detail and immediately ran screaming out of the lounge. Everyone immediately scrambled to escape or hide from the gunman. My mother, a fellow teacher and teacher's aide, ran into a small closet and attempted to hide. The closet was tiny, and along with three small women currently occupying it, was also home to a fold-away bed. No matter how hard they tried to close the door, the bed kept getting in the way. They were afraid to open the door and shove the bed out, as it would be a dead giveaway that someone was in the closet. After the initial shock, things began to quiet down in the school. They could hear a few shots fired, but had no idea how close the gunfire was in proximity to them. They literally crammed like sardines in a hot closet, unsure when or if the shooter would come for them. Though they tried to remain silent, my mother did make a plea for their salvation, as it was almost certain they wouldn't make it out of the school alive. The time ticked away slowly, and after an hour of being in the closet, they began to hear footsteps. The footsteps were slowly coming down the hallway toward the room they were in. Soft sounds, clicking, as if someone was searching around the hallway. As they came closer, the footsteps stopped in the doorway of the teacher's lounge. It was almost as if they could feel a pair of eyes searching the room from top to bottom, looking for any sign of life. My mom and the other woman had their hands on the doorknob trying to keep it closed as much as possible. They were almost certain this was the end. Suddenly, they heard the person walk away and enter a nearby bathroom. My father also had a free first block, so he was seated at his desk trying to catch up on grading student assignments. Suddenly, he heard a loud noise which he said sounded like a large table falling over. He wondered at what the sound might be, but figured it was simply a table that had gotten knocked over or someone had dropped several textbooks. Unlike the teacher's lounge, my father's classroom was located upstairs in a smaller portion of the school. While he continued grading papers, he began to hear someone running down the hallway. It was a teacher that seemed to be searching through the classrooms. He stopped in the doorway and said, one of the kids brought a gun and has taken hostages. We need to evacuate the other classmates immediately. My dad quickly said, I'll take the right side of the hall and you take the left. They then set off running down the hall to notify teachers and students. However, most of the classrooms had already been emptied. They would find out later that many of the classrooms had heard the initial gunshots and realized instantly what the sound was. The first floor classrooms had tried to evacuate by either running to the far stairwell or jumping out the windows into the parking lot. The classroom doors had small windows in which you could see people passing outside. The classroom that was located across the gunfire had been too scared to exit into the hallway at risk of being shot. The students were all jumping out of the windows in droves. The poor teacher was heavily pregnant, and the windows were quite narrow and only slanted slightly when they opened. It took a great deal of effort, but they got her out of the window. The students and teachers were scared for their life. Not knowing if the shooter would suddenly barge into their room and begin shooting as they tried to exit. My dad eventually located a classroom that had not been evacuated. He ran over to the teacher and explained the situation. He then spoke to the students and told them, you need to exit the school right now. Don't take your belongings. Don't go to the bathroom. Don't talk to anyone as quietly as you can. Take the far stairwell and don't look behind you. Go now. My dad is likely one of the most laid back individuals you could ever meet. The students knew this and listened closely, knowing the situation was dire. Everyone rushed to the far stairwell away from the gunman and exited to the bus garage. 
Dad said that the police arrived within minutes of them emptying the building and corralled everyone over to a funeral home that was across the road from the high school. Within 30 minutes, a SWAT team arrived and had set up a perimeter both inside and outside of the school. A family member had found out about the situation and called my grandfather, my mother's father. He had rushed to the school to check on his daughter and son-in-law. As my dad was waiting with the students in the funeral home parking lot, he began to search for my mother. My father asked one of the teachers that had been in the lounge with my mom if he had seen her. He said he thought she was outside. Dad once again searched through the crowd asking if anyone had seen my mother. By this time, my grandfather had arrived and asked my father where my mom was. He said that he couldn't find her. He again asked the teacher who had been in the lounge with her, and he said, well, come to think of it. I remember her saying that she might hide in the closet. Everyone was terrified of what might have happened to her, since it had been close to three hours since the gunman had entered the building. My father and grandfather notified some of the Kentucky State Police that were on the scene. Under the watchful eyes of snipers located in the parking lot and on the roof, the TSP officers entered the school and headed for the closet they thought my mother was in. My mother said that she and the other woman could hear someone outside, and they almost died of fright. Without announcement, the doorknob was suddenly ripped from their hands and light flooded into the closet. Not hearing a cacophony of gunfire, my mom looked up and realized there were two armed state troopers standing outside of the closet. She said that it was probably the best sight in her entire life. There were no times for tears of joy though. The officers told my mother and the other two women, you're going to be okay, but we need to get you out of the building ASAP. We need you to rush down the hallway and when you come into the lobby you exit, you need to run. After a count, my mother was ushered from teacher's lounge toward the high school lobby. She said when she rounded the corner, there were multiple snipers set up in the hall along with a 50 caliber machine gun pointed at the classroom where the shooter was. That day, my mother had worn a dress and heels and she said she could remember trying to run across the grass and her heels getting stuck in the soil. She kept running through until she joined the others in the funeral home parking lot. The initial takeover had begun around 9.50 a.m. during the first block of classes. The shooter had entered the school with three guns, one shotgun, a 357 pistol, and a 44 caliber magnum and walked into his first block class. Upon entering the classroom, he shot into the ceiling through the art classroom located above. Luckily, no one was hit by a bullet or debris of the initial shot. He released two rows of students and the teacher before settling in for a standoff. The woman that initially told everyone in the teacher's lounge about the shooting had been the teacher released from the classroom. Over the next few hours, students were released for small requests like cigarettes, soft drinks, and pizza. Multiple shots were fired throughout the ordeal, but thankfully, no one was injured or killed. The shooter was later identified as a 17-year-old student at the high school, advised police that he would surrender if he could see his father. He told police that he hadn't seen his father since he was four years old. Around 5 p.m. that day, the last hostage was released. The Kentucky State Police eventually negotiated his surrender before his father could arrive from Florida. While most people never know the reason behind such an insane act of violence upon questioning, the shooter referred to the Stephen King book Rage as his inspiration for the shooting. Crazy enough, my dad didn't think the student served any prison time. It was his belief that while the boy was initially taken to jail after surrendering, he was never tried and was instead released out of the county and told to never return. I guess 1989 was a different time. My dad says that word had quickly spread after the takeover and that many parents had arrived to the scene and were looking for their children. One of them asked my father where his son was and my dad wasn't for sure and that's what he told the parent. However, he had been too afraid to tell him that he thought he was currently being held hostage. It turns out he was. Many of the students held hostage suffered from PTSD and had to undergo counseling for many years. Fortunately, no one was physically harmed though. Once my parents were finally released from the scene, they had driven straight to my babysitters to pick me up. Being less than a year old, I was oblivious to the chaos that my parents had experienced that day. They say when they saw me, 
They picked me up and prayed that little girl would never have to experience anything like that. In high school, when I was a junior, I took a psychology class. It was my second period of the day. I liked the class, and one of the best things about it was that we were able to take open book tests. The teacher was really chill and let us work together on stuff, including the tests. We also had an option to take the tests in study rooms, which I always did because it was much more quiet and I just felt more comfortable in there. I was the only person in the class who did this, though, because you needed a pass, and the study rooms were all the way in the basement of the school. I guess most students just found that a hassle and would rather work with each other as well. Anyways, one particular Friday when we had a test to take, I did the usual thing, which was to get the test from the teacher and then go down to the study room. It took me about five minutes to get down there. There wasn't a whole lot at all in that level of the school, pretty much just the study rooms and then a couple of storage rooms and some old classrooms that weren't used. I got into one of the rooms and turned on the light. The rooms had carpet floors with a table and a few chairs in each one. They also had a little window for looking out into the hallway. I began the test and searched through my psychology book for the answers. I remember I had just reached question 15 when I suddenly heard over the intercom that we were entering a lockdown. I got a little nervous, but I told myself it was probably nothing. I turned the lights off like we were instructed to, but I didn't see a lock on the door. Our school was kind of old and these study rooms were sort of outdated. I went under the desk and decided to play some games on my phone to pass the time. Several minutes went by without anything happening. Then I heard some footsteps coming down the hallway. I got really nervous knowing the footsteps likely belonged to someone that wasn't supposed to be in the school. I turned my phone off and I got really quiet. The footsteps went down towards the door of my study room. As I hid under the table, I slowly turned my head to look towards the window, and just as I did I saw a man walk past it. All I could tell is that he was wearing a hooded sweatshirt, really. He walked past without looking in the window, but it still scared me a lot. Then I heard the door open in the room across the hall from mine, and then it shut. He must have gone in, and at that point, I was seriously considering making a run for it. I was relatively fast, but I didn't know who this guy was. I was trying to psych myself up into running when I heard the door open once again and then shut. I buried my face into the ground and held my breath. I didn't really hear any footsteps though so I lifted my head slightly to listen. I didn't know whether he had walked away or if he was just standing there. This made it much more risky for me to try to run away so I decided to stay put for the time. Several minutes went by and I got more and more nervous. I decided once again I was going to try to run back upstairs and this time I was going to actually do it. I didn't bother getting my backpack or anything besides just my phone wallet and keys. I slowly crawled up the carpet to the door and then stood up careful not to make a sound. I then placed my hands on the doorknob. The second it started to turn I heard it creak and it sounded extremely loud. At that moment I knew there was no turning back. I quickly left the room and then headed down the hallways. Once I saw it was clear, I started sprinting towards the stairs, which were about 50 feet away. As I was running, I looked down one hallway to my right while passing by and saw the man walking out of a room about 20 feet down the hallway. I ran even faster the rest of the ways and didn't look back. I sprinted up the stairs all the way back to my classroom. Once I got there, I pounded on the door, yelling that it was me, and after about 10 seconds I was let in. I told the teacher what had happened and she alerted the principal. Police were able to get into the basement and locate the man who was later found hiding in the same study room I had been in. Apparently, the man had broken into the school and beat up one of the teachers that ran off. They had been searching the school but hadn't made it to the basement yet. Every time I went near the basement of the school for the rest of my high school career, I would think about that day. This story happened my senior year of high school, which was about five years ago now. That year, they added this new room at the back part of the school. I can't remember the exact name they used for the room, but it was basically just an area with several computers and tables, and it was used for giving students extra help with school, 
and making up tests and things like that. It had been made out of an old abandoned classroom that wasn't used for several years. At this time, I had been out of school for two days with an ear infection, and in that time, I missed a math test. When I returned to the math teacher, he allowed me to make up the test during study hall, so I went to that new room to take it. The teacher, Mr. Marcus, didn't want to have to go to the room and watch me take the test, so he let me go by myself and said he trusted me not to cheat. I walked all the way over to the room, which was pretty much on the complete opposite end of the school. Once I got to the room, I sat down and began the test. It wasn't too long of a test, but it was a really important one. Right when I got to the third question, the telephone in the room started ringing. I didn't want to get up and answer it, but I figured it was probably Mr. Marcus. I walked over and picked it up. When I did, I was told we were under a lockdown and there was a suspicious person in the building. I was scared being all by myself back in this room with nobody else there, and there wasn't even a classroom next to me I could go to because this classroom was between two locker rooms for the gym, which was also nearby. I did what I was instructed to do and shut the door. As I did, I decided to take a quick look out into the hallway. It was completely empty and quiet as well. I went back in and decided to turn off the lights. I went out of sight of the door and went towards the back. Then I took out my phone and used the screen to give me some light to try to do more questions of the test. However, I couldn't really focus with us being in a lockdown. Suddenly, I heard the door to the room that I was in open. It was at that moment that I remembered I hadn't locked the door. Quickly, I ducked down underneath the table that I was at. I could see just barely from under the table a small amount of light coming in from the doorway and saw boots on the ground. At least they appeared to be boots as I couldn't really see much. I was terrified and I held my breath so that I wouldn't make a sound. Whoever was in there stood in the doorway for a while and then the door shut. I barely heard footsteps walking into the room. I was literally shaking trying not to make a sound. The room then went completely silent and remained that way. I slowly breathed in and out as quietly as I could. I was expecting at any moment to feel someone grab me from behind or something like that. But then, out of nowhere, I heard the sound of a computer falling off a desk to the ground. Then I heard the noise of a man yelling and screaming. It seemed as though whoever was in this room had gone into a rage and was screaming and smashing things. I opened my eyes and looked over. I still couldn't really see anything, but I could hear where all the noise was coming from, and it was at the opposite end of the classroom to my left. I was terrified and knew I needed to get out of there. The exit was directly in front of me and to the right, and the noises were directly in front of me to the left, so I figured I had to make a run for it. I took a deep breath and then got out from under the desk and ran as fast as I could as whoever was in there continued to seemingly destroy things in the room. I ran forward to the door and was just barely able to see where I was going. I stumbled into a chair just before the door, but I was still able to make it out. I heard the man yelling as I left the room and sprinted down the hallway. I ran all the way to the front end of the school where I saw a police officer. I yelled where the guy was and that he was destroying things. Another officer led me out of the school. After some time, I was able to calm down, and they ended up catching the man. I got to go home right after that. I feel so lucky that I made it out of that room. Obviously, whoever was in there was very dangerous.